Hello, Mathies, Gatos here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph the unit circle on your graphing calculator in six easy steps. So step one, I want you to identify the easy to remember points because I'm not going to graph these ones. So to me, the easiest points to remember are the 45 degree points, which are root two over two and root two over two. So anytime I have a reference angle of 45 degrees, it's always going to be the same thing. So in quadrant 2, 180 minus 45, this angle here has coordinates negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. In quadrant number 3, 180 plus 45 degrees has coordinates negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. Same thing in quadrant number 4. Quadrant number 4, 360 minus 45 also has coordinates root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. So I'm going to identify those easy to remember points and I'm not going to be graphing them. So since I'm not going to be graphing those points, I just have to recognize the only root that's remaining, which is root 3 over 2. So in my calculator, root 3 over 2 is 0.866. So anytime I see 0.866 on the graphing calculator and it's a positive number, I know that I'm talking about one of these four points which has a root 3 over 2 in it. Anytime on the graphing calculator I see a negative 0 0.866, I know I'm talking about any of these four points in which I have a negative root 3 over 2. So step number three, we're going to get our calculator ready in degree mode and in parametric mode. So into my graphing calculator, I go into my mode, and the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm in degree mode. Remember when you reset your calculator, you go back to radians. And then I'm going to go down. I don't want to be in function mode. I want to be in parametric mode. Okay, so out to my main screen. And let's go to the next step. Step number four, put the equations into my y equals. So just like on the unit circle, x is cosine and y is sine. I'm going to put those into my graphing calculator. So go into my y equals and x is cosine. So I'll enter in cosine of my variable t, which is t because it's a parametric equation. And for y, I'll enter in sine and my variable t, which will be t enter. And then step number five, I want to adjust my window setting. So my parametric variable t has to do with my angle. So I'm going around the unit circle 0 to 360 and I'm going up by 30 degrees. So you can see why I remembered the 45 degrees because I'm not going to be seeing those on the unit circle. I'm going to go 0, 30, 60, 90, etc. Now because it is a unit circle which has a radius of 1, I just condense my x and y values because I know it's going to be between negative 1 and positive 1, so I just go negative 2 to 2 and up by 1. So into my window setting, okay, and I'm going to go to 0 to 360 up by 30, so that was already in there, and I'll make these ones here from negative 2 to positive 2 up by 1. Same thing for the y, negative 2 to positive 2 up by 1. And then my last step is going to be to graph the unit circle and trace around it point by point. So you can see I have four different examples of things that we're going to see, but you can go all the way around the unit circle and I'll show you what that will look like. So into my graphing calculator I hit graph. And there is my unit circle. So I want to start at this point here. So I'm just going to go trace and zero. So trace is if you give me an x value, or in this case parametric t value, they will give you the coordinates that go with it. So you can see when t, the angle is 1, the coordinate is 1 and 0. So I can just arrow my way around this. You can see at 30 degrees it's, oh I remember that to be root 3 over 2 and a half. And if I arrow again, that's 60 degrees. So that's a half and positive root 3 over 2. Arrow around to 90 and that's 0 and 1. And you can see I can arrow around to all the other points. The only ones I don't have on there is the reference angle of 45 because we said that was just root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So this is a quick easy way to go around the unit circle and see all of those other points in the quadrants being positive and or negative. So I hope that video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.